Thank you so much for joining me on the Wisdom Whispers with uh, the amazing um, Richard Morden and Wendy Rattel. Um, you guys are going to take us down a little bit of a, a journey, I think, explaining and showing us um, some magic that you found. I am not going to introduce you because, as Michael just reminded me, these are just systems. So you tell me <laughs> who you are. And then um, there's no box that I create. Um, so over to you, Richard and Wendy. So good morning. Uh, actually, good hello, I'm Richard Morden. Um, grew up in the agricultural industry. Grew up as a, a farm kid. You know, a uh, family of six. Saw a lot of dynamics in my family. Uh, uh, worked various places. Ended up working for a career for a manufacturing company for, you know, three decades to sort of, which allowed me a lot of education, things to do. And events in my life sort of pushed me into modalities to first what I call self-care. In 2013, I found uh, emotional freedom technique. Um, and that was just around the time my wife passed away. So a big change of life. And and, and uh, unconsciously, I knew I needed some kind of self-care. And that was life-changing for me. Uh, I spent uh, uh, almost a year training with a, a lady who was a master trainer, psychotherapist, really dug into my own work and who I am and trying to understand my own, my own life, my own family dynamics. Uh, later on, discovered... Uh, uh, NLP, you know, and, and again, established a new relationship many years later. Um, it's still working, looking at what, how do I see life? What, what, why is life the way it is in a sense? And in our journey where even where Wendy and I met, talking about four years ago, we always look at what, how can we make this easier? Because like, as we just talked about systems, there's so many systems that lineate us into, into uh, modes of thinking. And I'm so much outside the box because I never fit in any box. You know, as we said, I'm not a, uh, you know, I, I have a regular education. Uh, I knew how to work. I knew how to apply myself. And this came upon us. We'll describe more how this came about, you know, those time sweeps. Because again, we're always looking for something simpler. What could be easier? Hi, <laughs> I'm Wendy Rattel. And that was probably one of the best intros I think I probably could have ever had to a Zoom. Um, the cat and the dog ran by the computer, unplugged it, oh, no. power went on oh, the computer, no. and I lost everything. So that pretty much sums up what I've done for the last 60 years. <laughs> Something's amazing, it's happening, it's great, it's going wonderfully, and, and then it gets sidelined. Um, what time sweeps has had for me is the ability to easily and or more easily come back, like to come back laughing from what just happened and not panic or freak out or be upset is a huge shift in everything I've known for the past, you know, as I said, 60 years, um, my adventure into or my learning into the energy work started well my daughter's 27 now and she got very very ill and I had no idea how to how to fix it how to heal her and ran into a woman who um held her for an hour and she was better and at that point I had to look at what else was out there life got in the way I didn't do a lot about any of that for the next you know, 15 years or so, um, dabbled in and out, then met Richard and have really learned a lot about who I am and what I am. Um, and the what I am, I think is, is important and the power that I hold, which is a really scary thing to say publicly. Um, but life is an adventure. And Michael's comments before we started this recording, I'm I'm listening to that thinking, yes, that is beautiful, a beautiful start to what we're doing. Because we are so individual, we are so unique. And I think that's part of what's getting lost in the world right now, is that individuality, that uniqueness, and those things that we really truly should be celebrating. And if we can use this modality, this time sweep method to help people remember who they are and celebrate that 
then I think we've, at least we've ex exceeded beyond my wildest dreams. I don't know about Richard, but I think he would be in full agreement with me. He's nodding. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the time sweep method was developed as we live in the here and now, not in the past or in the future. However, much of what we experience here and now is a learned response to something that happened in the past. Events become frozen in our being and have an impact on our lives. The event may have occurred in our own lifetime or perhaps in the lifetime of our ancestors. Many methods look to the past to uncover the root of the challenge. This may be effective. However, there are always tendrils and residual blocks left behind. Time sweep captures all the tendrils and releases those blocks. Time sweep stands out by blending visualization, mindfulness, and emotional decluttering, distinctively focusing on the energetic block. This allows individuals to sweep through their own timeline, identifying, acknowledging, and releasing emotions without the necessity of reliving past traumas or dissecting the event and the emotion in detail. This innovative approach offers a gentle yet effective pathway to emotional clarity and well being, making it a valuable addition to the understanding of who we are and why we get stuck. So we have a broken hourglass here. Um, have you ever heard the phrase, that's how we always do it, and wondered mm -hmm. why? Well, Richard and I have spent countless hours discussing and dissecting that why. That's how we always do it. It's not a very good answer. I, didn't I never liked that answer. And it's very similar to telling a child, well, because I told you so. That didn't work very well for me either. What we've learned is that we hold generations of stories. We hold life experiences and trauma in ourselves, in our DNA, in our organs, and in our energy fields. We pattern our lives with these stories. And much of what happens is in the unconscious, both good and bad. Blocks um, and sabotaging habits that we can never seem to get free of. This system helps with the freedom. So as I mentioned, we have generations of memories. We have ancestries and expectations and, and most of us are actually unconscious of how that is affecting our lives. Generational, social, and family dynamics expectations, they often shape the boundaries of our lives. Families guide where we live, who we marry, and what our life should look at, look like. We are told to go into the family business, and it's strongly suggested that you go to university or to trade school. And do you ever feel that that boxes you in, that that isn't the mold that you were expected or we, you wanted to do. I mean, for myself, I was told I was going to university. I was told this was, I was the first to go to university. That was I was doing. That was how it was going to happen. And that was how I started my first experiences in my adulthood. Next. <laughs> so lifetimes of experiences. We accumulate these, this information ourselves, um, and it impacts the view of the world around us. We've been taught our view of the world. This information is stored. It's trapped. It's in our DNA. Stored information becomes a filter for how we view the world and often determines our reaction to, a, to an event or a particular stimuli. For example, my mom... Um, hears someone has a sore throat and her imme immediate reaction is you've got strep throat or it's very severe or and the proper course of action is you go to the doctor and you get a prescription. That's just the way it's done. It would never occur to her that maybe you should have said something at school or at work. Maybe there's somebody pissing you off. And if you actually voice that, 
and release the energy in your throat, that sore throat goes away. That was so far out of her wheelhouse that it, we just didn't even mention it to her. But that was how my kids were raised. You just speak it, you yell it, you scream it, you sing it, whatever, release it from your body. Um, next slide. Can you remember, or do you remember, and I bet you do, your first kiss, the first time you held a baby, or even the first time you sat beside somebody or, and they passed on? Those are highly traumatic or impactful events. Perhaps <laughs> traumatic is the right word. <laughs> but these events are a snapshot you clearing something, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually my trick, not yours. <laughs> I'm the one that calms, he yawns. And now we have a confirmation because the dog is barking. <laughs> huh. Couldn't find the mute. <laughs> so there's, there's... one moment. <laughs> <laughs> we are live. And what? this is human centric, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this, this is life. <laughs> that is life. <laughs> oh. So when these events happen, they become a snapshot. It's a moment in time, and we hold on to that moment. The events can be good or bad, and we seem to remember the bad ones more than the good ones often. And sometimes the bad ones have a little more punch or a little more force. Um, Kensel Van, Van de Kock's book, The Body Keeps the Score, talks about trauma from extreme battle conditions. And Mark Walm's book, It Didn't Start With You, and he talks about generational tra um, trauma, which goes back seven generations. So these traumatic events that we kind of react to, you might not might not have even been in our lifetime. They might have been in one of our ancestors' lifetime. So now we're carrying all of that trauma as well. In childhood, anybody here ever been told, I can't? Or you can't. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was told that often. Yeah. Sometimes there's a good reason. You don't want to put a six-year-old behind the wheel of a car. Fair enough. But much of the time, it's because somebody that is in a position of authority around us couldn't. So therefore, they're protecting us. And you can't either. So that I can't takes on a framework within our system. We become afraid to try. We become held in place. We become stuck, for lack of a better expression. And nobody, generally, people around us don't say, okay, well, perhaps if you took these steps, you could, or we stop believing, we stop, we stop imagining that it's even possible. So this time sweep method starts to unravel and unlock all of those I can'ts. So it broadens your awareness. It broadens your ability to go take that deep breath and go, you know, like that train that says, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, and move forward. And that's what we're hoping to guide and help people do, is that move forward. Mm -hmm. but the other thing we're hoping to help people do is this habitual patterns of thinking. I will never forget when my, my husband, who joined my son and I when my son was three, and it was very shortly after he joined us and my son had done something and 
Dave turned around and said to Chris, and I don't even remember what the phrase was. And the look on his face, Dave's face, was my father just came out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we've all experienced that. If you've got kids, your mom or your dad has come out of your mouth at some point in time and you've got, oh, oh I never thought I'd do that. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's this habitual patterning that we have been trained into that we just, we're, it's, a, it's the way we express the world. It's the way we perceive the world. And until we can take that, have that stopping moment going, oh, Lord, that is actually what I just did. We don't recognize that there might be another way. We could perhaps do something different. And what if we actually became conscious? So going back to the childhood and the traumas and the experiences, it's common knowledge that from the age of one to seven, we develop our fundamental perspective, perspectives of the world that we live. However, as a child, we experience and live through experiences. So we we embody so everything that we that happens in our childhood and particularly in those ages are experiences that we are physically living whereas as we get older sometimes things just happen to us and become stuck so these childhood things particularly in those early fundamental years are ones that we spend a lot of time or i have certainly spent a lot of time trying to unravel and because they are so stuck, they are so um, just there. And you have to, all the, sight, the sights, the sounds, the sensations, the intentions, the actions, they're recorded. And we have to interact with them. And we need to learn how to interact with them. And I think as we get into some of the traumas and everything, we kind of forget that memories are good, can be good as well. And even though a memory is good, is that the way we want to frame it and perceive it going forward? Maybe it was good at the time, but maybe it could be better. Maybe there's more. So we want to embrace the more. And how do you take these events and memories and expand them into more, opening the energy up? So there's the opportunity and the more. So going back to the, the bit about the memories and everything um, and how they're stored in our body. One of the things that Richard and I talked about several months ago and was new to both of us is that our memories are stored as images and they're stored throughout the body and the cataloging system can be interesting and intricate. Because you might think that all of the images from one event should be in one place. And that's not necessarily the case. We've got images that float around our DNA and they're trapped in different places. Sometimes, like for, for example, what we use, the example we use here, the scar on your knee is the bicycle accident from age 12. And it's a vivid, vivid, vivid memory. But there's the, you know, the scar on the knee that's in one place. And then there's the, the, what actually happened to make that scar on the knee. And it's in a different place. But those memories are vivid and they're, um, there's, they override some of the way we operate. So learning more about them and learning how they impact us can be very, very powerful. And also allowing them to move. You know, we're actually just spending all this time trapping, 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 trapping everything inside our body. Well, 
if it's all trapped and it's all over the place, it becomes very cluttered. And it means that we don't really flow that easily as we're trying to access information or as we're trying to move through new circumstances. And I think I might have held, talked about that slide or this slide and the last one. <laughs> the images are held in place. That's great, Richard, thank you. And this information is very valuable and it's very important for our well-being. However, it does become part of, you know, trapped there and we need to be moving it on. So who here has spent a lot of time working on negative beliefs and how they override. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> we know there are many ways to do this. We've all done this. We know that negative beliefs impact what we do, how we do it, when we do it, why we do it. And we've heard all kinds of different ideas about how and the what and the where and the why. There are modalities, processes, models, and thousands, tens of thousands of professionals that work with clients every day. And many have great mm -hmm. success. What Richard and I have talked about and what the Time Suite Method does is it works a little bit beyond so traditional methods release pieces of the memory takes a lot can take a long time and it seems to be cyclical so there's always more there's always another hurdle and people quite often will reach a plateau and they stay there and this is really where time sweep can step in So what time sweep does is it collects all of those limiting beliefs. It collects all of those blocks. It, it interlinks all of the images that are stored in our bodies, pulls them into one place, or perhaps releases them where they stand. We like to think it all pulls them in. Um, one of the the way I describe it is it's like taking a million photos because we've all taken a million photos and they're in boxes and they're in box. <laughs> Barbara's nodding again. That's awesome. <laughs> um, they're in boxes. They're stored all over the house. We make the photo album. So you put it all in a photo album so you actually can see it and understand it and move through it. And it's not as cluttered. I know for myself, I get things all cluttered. It would be that lovely ADHD brain of mine to put a label on things. And when it's cluttered, I don't function. I need, I need it clean and so I can see everything that I that I'm doing. And that this time sweep method, you think about a broom, it sweeps it all out and makes it easier to deal with. So yes, we are addressing the body's stored images and memories. We're gathering all that information as woven, woven in through the body and we release it. It is gentle, it is easy, it is not um, emotionally impactful. It can take those emotions so you're not processing them, you're not reliving them, you're not re-embedding them by reliving them and simply releases them. So open all time sweeps is the setup phrase for what we use. And from there, what would you like to clear? So whether you're using this on a relationship struggle, a health issue, self-sabotaging thoughts, procrastination habits. Richard had the honor of clearing a woman's property. This particular phrasing clears an amazing number of things, easily, effectively, permanently. 
And then we can also introduce other ideas. So we can bring in the things that you do want and help integrate those things. So we can connect all of this tiny little threads and let them go. We can get to the root of the problem quickly because we don't need to know the problem. We don't need to be looking back to try pinpoint or figure it out. We go, okay, in the here and now, this is what I am experiencing. I don't know where it came from, but I know in the here and now, this is what I'm experiencing. And I'm not very happy with it and I don't want it here. So we can take that point, gather it all together and release it. So you can move through and beyond. It's kind of like, remember the whack-a-mole game? Go bang, 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 bang. You're forever addressing things. They continually are popping up. Well, we're going to unplug the game. <laughs> so what's next? like to see the possibilities? Is there an obstacle, specific obstacle that you're looking for? We A full session is um, $200. And then we also create a protocol for you to use at any time. So that could be, I'll let Richard speak to the protocols because he's been working on those a little bit more than me. Um, go ahead, Richard. I'll, I'll stop sharing if that's okay. So the protocols are energetic pro protocols, and I'm doing some testing in here with the group as well. Um, we generally add in the energy of what we're talking about. Or I give it a sequence number, and we're not new to this. This isn't new. People have done this for a long time. So again, we're uh, creating those on the spot. Often after a session, we can wrap it up and again, just add a number sequence to them. And then we're looking more extensively to create more of that, again, with testing and and Obviously, we want the validity of what we're doing so people do have a result. Uh, but again, with the follow up and, and uh, like oftentimes from a session, I'll just say include all of the previous statements we've talked about and add that into this next clearing. And it seems to work because we're, our, our mind is and our intention is on the imagery. And all because every, every picture, as you said, has a thousand words, and those thousand words connect to other images. And that's where the, a lot of the trailer sequence comes in when we're connecting these imageries and, and that. And just, uh, like I said, clearing the land with a lady yesterday, um, just she was bringing back some old memories and those memories are connected to her, connected to the land. And so we're finding a lot of potential of other areas we can work with this because, you know, we are the land, we are nature. You know, we are of the source, all the same source. We're, so we're not, um, you know, when we work on this, we're, we're clearing more than us. You know, we're clearing the residuals out of the places we live, places we've been and and like I said we're still in, still much in a learning phase of this so we're what I want to say most about this I'm having fun we're both having fun this isn't drudgery because truly it, it, what shows up in the moment and like I've said so many times you can't make this stuff up it just it just comes out right so you just and so you're not into this strata that people like to live in you know here's how I'm going to work with you and I'm going to you know go A to B and I have to read my sheet through. I'm the first guy to jump off the page because I can't follow directions very well <laughs> and try something different, you know? So it's, and like I said, it shows up because my intent is for good, both of us to do good, you know, to good, good be, be of compassion, be of care. And in the here and now that we can release this so we're not keeping cycling back and reliving traumatic events and going through, like people spend lifetimes trying to release trauma, but but what about living here and now, being who you are? Just mm -hmm. being you, finding out who the heck you are so you can live with your full expression and who, and who you are. And that's where we're all about right now is what's our expression? Because I think they've done a lot of <laughs> work out there to try and make sure they take that away from us. And we're here to embrace that, who, who we are with every fiber of our of ourselves and and just be, 